What's up with Tingle? Is he crazy? Is he a grown man trapped in a fantasy world? Is he evil? Today we'll be exploring all these things and more. Welcome to What's Up With, where we take a look at interesting but often underexplored characters within the Nintendo universe. With all that Breath of the Wild E3 footage, I am pumped to make a new video about Zelda in some way, and I figured it's about time we had a Zelda character to the What's Up With family. Tingle's often been a source of controversy in the Legend of Zelda series. Most Zelda fans I've spoken with have had a neutral or negative opinion of the character, leading some to go as far as saying that he's the Jar Jar Binks of the series. I've heard some claims that Tingle is wildly popular in Japan, but disliked in the West, and while I can't for certain say that I've seen hard research to support this claim, Tingle has seen major game releases that only saw life in Japan without an English translation. Personally, I find him incredibly fascinating. The original character's demeanor reminded me a lot of Imakuni from the Pokemon series, who just so happened to be the topic for the very first fact video I ever made. Heck, Tingle is in more Zelda games than Ganondorf even. Not Ganon the Beast, but just the human form. Despite his beginnings as an extremely obscure face in The Legend of Zelda, he's evolved to become one of the most iconic characters in the series. Tingle made his debut in Majora's Mask as a traveling map salesman, known for his red balloon that you must pop, his green clothes that almost look like yours but not quite, his Flava Flav clock, and of course, his ridiculous magic words, Kulu Limpa. While Tingle does change from game to game, most of his major quirks remain the same in various Zelda titles. He's 35 years old, but asserts to you that he's a forest fairy, referencing the Kokiri, who of course, never age beyond childhood. There are a lot of rumors out there that Tingle's original art was based off of longtime Nintendo composer Koji Kondo. And while I haven't seen any outright confirmation of this, it's certainly possible. Just look at the two. In this game, Tingle's father is the tourist center guide, who laments the fact that he spoiled his son to the point where he skipped school and rejected adulthood. He finds Tingle's clothing and actions ridiculous, but he still appears to love his son a little bit, giving you a heart piece if you present him with a picture of his son. In a recent interview with Kotaku, longtime Zelda producer Eji Anuma explained that his design process for Tingle came when they wanted to make a character who could sell maps. They figured, if someone's making maps, what if they flew on a balloon so that they could accurately see the land all around them to draw it? And then this evolved to, well okay, if someone's flying around in a balloon drawing maps, then they're probably a pretty weird person to begin with, so we'll need to make him weird. And that they did. To quote Anuma, the whole thing comes together a very Peter Pan kind of visual. It's this guy in his 30s in a green suit and is flying and never wants to grow up. So the joke is, what if Peter Pan actually did age, but still claimed that he never wanted to grow up? The end result is something pretty hilarious. So that's all well and good, but I wanted to take a look at Tingle throughout the ages. Tingle had a light cameo in Oracle of Ages, but the real character I want to take a look at is Wind Waker Tingle. He sure looks like our Majora's Mask counterpart, but there is one major difference. If you look close enough at his face, you can actually see that he's evil! I'm not kidding! Take the silly costume away, and Tingle in Wind Waker is actually a pretty terrible person. Your first warning? You don't find Tingle floating in a balloon ready to sell you maps. No, you find him in prison, caught for stealing the Picto Box. If you navigate to a stone slab below the town jail, you can read a story, presumably by Tingle, admitting to his crimes. We're not off to a great start. The next strike against Tingle in this game is that he's greedy. In fact, after Wind Waker, the trait of Tingle being hungry for rupees and treasure seems to crop up a lot more. The Majora's Mask maps were almost always reasonably priced, but this Tingle runs an empire. Not only does his incredible chart cost 201 rupees, but you also have to pay him 398 rupees per Triforce chart to cipher it as well. All in all, this Tingle will charge you over 3,000 rupees over the course of your game. And strike three for Tingle? He's abusive! Most of the time on Tingle Island, you'll find two characters endlessly working to keep the island spinning, while Tingle does nothing. One of them, Ankle, is his brother. The other, David Jr., is an explorer who ended up on Tingle Island after he got trapped in a storm. In his words, When I awoke, I was dressed like this. His pictograph trophy also mentions that he hates the uniform. Pretty sure Tingle's holding this guy against his will. He actually has a second brother, the blue-colored Knuckle, who created and carved the Tingle Island statue when he was a child. He left the island after Tingle wrote a four Tingle only sign in the tower. What a nice guy. 
Tango will constantly ignore these workers throughout your adventure, to the point where the terrified men encourage you to visit often to keep them company, and spare them the wrath of Tingle just a little while longer. So what happened to Tingle? For one, I think it's almost certain that this Tingle is a completely different person than the kindly man that we met in Majora's Mask. If you complete the Tingle Tuner quests, they mention a legend of a 35-year-old fairy who helped the hero in the past. It also mentions that some men wear green and red and gather on a specific island on their 35th birthday. So this Tingle is likely just trying to emulate the one that he's heard about in the stories. In a strange way, this makes Tingle very similar to the legend of Link. The hero emerges, clad in green, time and time again. Tingle continues his streak of being a bad person in Four Swords Adventures, where he steals Force Gems away from you if you leave them alone too long. Tingle, Ankle, and even David Jr. make an appearance once again in the Minish Cap, but all his crew does in this game is help you fuse kinstones. Tingle would once again be referenced, albeit a bit more discreetly, in Twilight Princess. Perlo, the man behind the Star game, has been stated by Enuma as a direct reference to Tingle if he had a realistic design. He still retains the green garb, and if you look closely, he even still carries the clock. Perlo is arguably the least openly pleasant of all Tingle versions. He's constantly rude, gets angry when you win his game, and he tries to intentionally rig his game so that he can scam future customers for their hard-earned rupees. This is actually the last main series game where Tingle makes a direct appearance as a character, but this man has so many cameos throughout the Legend of Zelda universe that you can barely go a game without finding him in one way or another. You can find a miniature poster of Tingle at the back of the milk bar in Phantom Hourglass. It's almost too small to tell, but based on Tingle's recent behavior, I'd say it's a wanted poster. Spirit Tracks gives Tingle a bit more positive of a cameo in the form of a statue. You can see this same statue off to the side during the end credits as well. You'd think with the huge emphasis on flight in Skyward Sword that it would be a perfect opportunity for Tingle to return to his original balloon form. However, the only Tingle to be found is in Princess Zelda's room, in the form of a knitted doll. With all the yarn next to him, it's even suggestible that Zelda made this herself. And of course, Tingle makes his way as a cameo character in a handful of Nintendo mashup titles. He's in three Smash Bros. games, as an interactable object in Melee's Great Bay, and as an assist trophy that causes random mayhem in both Brawl and Smash 4. And most recently, Tingle joined the fray of Hyrule Warriors, fighting as a DLC character with balloons, bombs, and even his wallet. Hyrule Warriors is all about turning some of the most unlikely Legend of Zelda characters into warriors, but Tingle is by far one of my favorites in terms of absolute ridiculous animations. That's almost all I've got about our green little friend, but no conversation about Tingle is complete without mention of the fact that he has four games in his honor, two of them fully-fledged titles. I've gone over these in decent detail in my Rare Zelda Games video, but here's a quick summary if you missed that one. Tingle's two smaller games include a Balloon Fight clone, as well as a variety of Tingle-themed apps for the DSi called the Too Much Tingle Pack. But two full DS adventures were crafted in Tingle's name. Both own appropriately ridiculous titles worthy of Tingle. Freshly picked Rosy Ruby Land and Ripened Balloon Trip of Love. If you haven't played either of these titles, I can't blame you. Ruby Land was only localized in English for a European release, while Trip of Love never saw an English release at all. The first is an RPG where you fight a giant rupee, befriend a voluptuous pink tingle named Pinkle, and hire bodyguards. The second is a point-and-click adventure that is both simultaneously a parody of The Wizard of Oz and a dating simulator. Both games are surprisingly good, and it's a shame that they didn't see a widespread release, but both share a crucial detail in Tingle lore. Both games start with a 35-year-old man, but neither are Tingle at the beginning of the game. The first is conned by the illusions of paradise, becoming a slave that must earn rupees for his master rupee until he can overthrow him. The second, a down-on-his-luck 35-year-old man, gets sucked into a fairy tale world after a two rupee ad convinces him that a book will make him instantly popular with women. I know it's nonsensical, but I love the idea that any middle-aged man can become the next Tingle at any given point, each with slightly different personalities, but all bound to the way of the Tingle, using maps, making money, and using those magic words, Kulu Limpa. Speaking of which, those magic words seem to be an adaptation of the Japanese phrase associated with that motion you make to signify somebody's crazy, like twirling a finger around your ear. Tingle is definitely crazy. 
Even though he's gotten a lot of flack over the years, even though almost every version of him besides the original is a bad person, and even though we never got proper releases of his exclusive games, I can't help but like the guy. I don't know if Breath of the Wild will have Tingle in it, but I do know one thing. They claim it is the largest Zelda game by far. And with a world that big, somebody's got to draw the maps. Thank you as always for watching this episode of What's Up With. If there's an obscure Nintendo character that you would like to see explored, shoot me a tweet over at TheJWits and it just might become the next entry in the series. Thank you all so much for your support over the years, and I'll see you next time with more Nintendo content.